Welcome to In the News for July 2nd, 2021. I'm Brett Bernie from AppsonLaw.com. Hi, everybody. This is Jeff Richardson from iPhone JD. Jeff, it is July 2nd. We are halfway through the year 2021. But do you remember <laughs> where you were 14 years ago this past this week? <laughs> I do. And I would describe myself as jealous because I yes. had been waiting for the new yes. iPhone for so long. I had been using the Palm Trio and I so wanted to upgrade because it looked so cool. And then I discovered that the iPhone did not work with Outlook Exchange email, which is what you know my company oh, and my, my law firm ouch. and so many other companies did. Right. So I couldn't get Ow. one that first year. I had to wait until the second generation, the iPhone 3G a year later. So it, I've been an iPhone user for 13 years, but it was 14 years ago it all started. <laughs> You did a great job covering some of this. And of course, one of my favorite videos of all time you linked to down here at the bottom of your post today. This is uh, David Poe, who used to be the tech columnist for the New York Times. He's gone. He was at Yahoo for a while, and I'm not sure what he does. He still does a lot of writing. Super fun guy. Actually, the son. Uh, this is a fun, useless uh, legal trivia. He is one of the, the sons, I believe, of the original founders of what we know today as Jones Day because that was and based Pogue. in Cleveland. Yeah, yeah it the, used to the, be the, Jones Day, Revis, and Pogue. Exactly. Pogue was his dad. Exactly. Yeah. He spoke years ago. You and I both saw him at the ABA yes. Tech Show, and he said yes. that his father would be proud that he was finally speaking <laughs> at a lawyer convention. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love that. Well, you had another great link in here from 9 to 5 Mac, which was just great. And boy, if if anybody is out there listening to us, Jeff, that is anything like us, and I think there's got to be some uh, folks out there, this is such a fun post to scroll through. Like, I remember 14 years ago, similar to you, I wasn't able to get the original iPhone. I actually ended up getting it, but not in you know the day that it came out. But just to see some of these pictures of where people were camping out in front of the Apple stores, the fact that there were huge actual iPhone, actual uh, or iPhones in the displays of these Apple stores, and it just goes through that people were so excited about people when dressed this up was in coming iPhone out. costumes and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, there was so. <laughs> much excitement you know we don't have the lines outside the stores anymore because apple has changed the way they sell iphones and most people right order them but i remember in those early days it was a fun way for you know true geeks to get together when i was standing in line for one of the earliest iphones yeah. i remember i was you know you would be talking you would be there for a long time so you'd be talking to people around you and you would all have shared passions i remember uh, one person who was in downtown new orleans waiting for a new iphone with me he was like a, he had written some book about cocktails and was in new orleans to open up a cocktail museum i'm like when would i get a chance to meet somebody like this so it used to be quite quite the fun experience but yeah it's amazing looking back in time how much the iphone changed everything you know you, you just showed walt yeah. mossberg on the yeah. screen for the wall street journal and he was one right. of the people that originally talked about as did david pogue in his initial review that people were very nervous about having a mobile phone that didn't have a keyboard on it which i, I feel yes. like it's so silly in retrospect because blackberry keyboards and the trio keyboards those little chiclet keyboards were so tiny that I always thought it was, you know, difficult to type on them. And the iPhone was so smart to realize that you don't need a keyboard on the screen all the time. Right. You only need it there when you're typing. So otherwise, why not get rid of it and have more screen real estate to use? And so it was a brilliant change. But at the time, it, it worried people. People were worried about whether it would uh, be a good change or not. And it was, obviously. I remember back in 2007, which is when I remember it was January 2007, Steve Jobs went on stage and described, I mean, we all kind of knew that it was coming, but I remember he was talking about, in fact, I've, I've, I've got some slides here that I've used in some of my, my presentations. Let me, let me just pop them up real quick. I remember he had a slide behind him and he said, we've got a new device. It's an iPod, a music player, right? Because at the time that's really all we had. We didn't have an iPhone. Uh, it, it is a, a phone. And of course I remember everybody in the crowd, I just was watching it online. They went crazy. And then it's an internet device. It's what he and called. Let, let me just interrupt you there, Brett. Actually yeah. to be more precise, what he said was we have three new products today. We have an, yeah, a new yeah, iPod, right. a new iPhone. <laughs> we have a new iPod, a new phone. <laughs> and an internet communicator. And then, you know, he went iPod, phone, internet communicator. These are not yeah. three different devices. Yeah. This is one device. And that was his brilliant showmanship to show it off. 
it, amazing. And I just remember he was, it, I, everybody was whipped up in a frenzy, including myself. I mean, I wasn't there. I was watching it online. But I mean, just watching it today, if you go back on YouTube. But it's just like you said, I always like to show these slides a lot of times when I give a presentation, Jeff. People remember, like, we had the candy bar. We had the flip phones. Like the, I the, had many the of those time, phones you're showing right now. <laughs> the time before the iPhone, right? And here's the BlackBerry devices that a lot of people, I mean, some people still, you know, have them in their cold, dead hands. Like, they just loved having that physical keyboard but then you already mentioned right the old palm pilots the palm treo 650 man i used that thing it was so beaten and battered up but you know what today I, I just tell a lot of people we still think of these devices as phones right and even our iphone we think of it as a phone first that can you know make some birds angry or crush some candy or or do a couple of other things but jeff i love asking people in a room when I've given a presentation, like, have you ever sat down and thought about how many things that this phone replaces? I mean, it's my first place to go and check the web. It's my, it's where I get my news. It's my radio. It's my music. It's my video camera. It's television. It's books. It's when I travel, it's my flight tracker. It's how I call a car or a cab or anything today. It's how I wake up in the morning with my alarm clock. It's my voicemail. It's my GPS. Oh, and by the way, it, by the way, it can also make some phone calls. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, there's so I, many things. A good example of that is that one of them that you have on screen here is the camera. I mean, the iPhone yeah. has become the camera. I mean, it's the number one camera used by far. Absolutely. And, you know, it has had a, a real effect on the sale of cameras because why have a separate device that's a camera? Your iPhone right. is an excellent camera and it's always in your pocket. I, it, so I, I, I show this to people because I want you to start thinking of, and I tell, especially lawyers today because of the information we carry around in these devices, this is really a computer first, right? It is the new personal computer that can make some phone calls. And in fact, in 2017, so that was 10 years, when the iPhone was 10 years old, Walt Mossberg, he was actually writing in The Verge at the time, he said, it, it's, it's, it's not done. The iPhone is not done conquering the world is what he said. In fact, it has become the new personal computer. And I just, I find that fascinating that today we have to think about that. And even in 2007, Watt Mossberg wrote about that. He like, this is a breakthrough handheld computer. And today it's just like, like, like he said, it's not done. It's still going on. It's just amazing. It's a, it was a transformative device and it would be fun if in our lifestyle lifetimes we get to see another one like this. And I know that yeah. Apple, you know, would love to be the one to bring it to us, but it really did. I mean, you can really draw a line between before the iPhone and after the iPhone and it's just changed so much about our worlds. I mean, just, you know, if you think about the, the app economy, you know, things like yes. Uber and Lyft, I mean, so many things that, you know, how would, how would these things even exist in a world before the right. iPhone, um, right. it's, 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 it's the, the tentacles are just broad. There's so many aspects of life that has changed for the better, I think. Absolutely. Well, I always say this to a lot of folks. It's, it's not like Apple invented the phone or, in fact, they don't invent several devices that we associate with them today. But they, they have this kind of a magical way of just making them better. And I think another great example is a watch. Like today, one of the top watch, the, the top watch today is the Apple Watch. You had a good post uh, that you did earlier this week talking about the international bands for Apple Watch, like watch bands, <laughs> not, mm -hmm. not music bands, watch bands. But this is a great <laughs> post. I love how you have all the pictures in here. Yeah, it's fun because they're so colorful. One of the, I think one of the most brilliant things Apple did when they first introduced the Apple Watch was make it so that you can swap out the bands. Because before that, yeah. I've certainly had watches that I've worn throughout my entire life, but I would never change the band on a watch unless the band broke and I had to replace right. it or something like that. Exactly. With my Apple Watch, I change my band usually twice a day. I mean, I usually, you know, <laughs> what I'm wearing, right? I, I have the Milanese Loop, which is a little bit fancier yeah. that I usually wear into the office. But then at home and on the weekends, I usually wear one that's just a little bit more colorful and can stand up to abuse more. It doesn't matter if it gets wet. This, uh, the new ones that they came out this week with all of the, um, you know, really it's for the Olympics, although Apple doesn't say that because right. I'm sure they didn't pay for the rights to say the word Olympics. But right. really for the, all the different Olympic teams, they have all these great colors. And it's the, um, it's the, the what's it called? The, the loop. I'm, I'm, I'm breaking on the name of it. The, uh, not the solo loop, the uh What's the type? Scroll up to the top of my uh, post here. It says, yeah, what it's yeah, yeah. I'm just blanking Sorry. out the name of it. The uh, sport, uh, sport, sport loop. loop. Yeah, sport loop. Sport Sorry, I'm loop. Just blanking yes, out. sir. 
And the sport lube, which I'm holding in my hand is nice because it's sort of stretchy. So it can, you know, fit to your arm and stuff. And it's got the, you know, I would normally call it Velcro. It's not technically Velcro because it's not right. the brand Velcro. It's, but it's a hook and loop fastener, but you can sort of, you know, put it on there and you can infinitely adjust the size. And so you can make it perfectly comfortable. Um, there's a, a writer um, who talks about Apple things called Renee Ritchie. He calls it the, uh, the Velcro pants of Apple watch bands because it's really comfortable and they have cool colors. So Apple did a nice job of coming out with all the different colors for the international teams. Another one I have in my hand here that I really like is called the solo loop, which is just one big piece of rubber basically that stretches and goes around your hand. But I've got, yeah. you know, I, I will admit, I, I, I don't even necessarily want to count them. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, 10 different watch bands that I, that I've purchased over the years. And it's fun that you can customize the watch just for look for color, you know, just to sort of match what you're wearing or to match the team that you want to support or something like right. that, or um, for different surface, you know, circumstances. I mean, the Milanese loop is fancy. I'll wear that to court, but yeah. you know, I will wear the solo loop if I'm going swimming with my Apple watch or something like that. So it's yeah. that, that was, oh, and, and that's just one thing. I mean, that that's aside from what's on the screen of the Apple watch, which of course is the most important, but just right. that one decision. I really give kudos to Apple for designing the Apple watch so that it is so easy to change those bands. Jeff, you just, you mentioned that, but I don't know if people really understand how easy it is. Like if you take off your watch, there's just a little tiny button. I usually use like the little, the uh, corner of my thumbnail and mm -hmm. I can just press into it. And the, um, uh, the, the loop, the band just slides out of the side and you put another one in, just slide it right back in and it clicks into place and it's just amazingly secure. Like I've never had a problem with the Apple watch coming off pretty much even the cheapo bands that I get. And I typically get a lot from, you know, from Amazon. I mean, the fact that Apple just, uh, just allowed multiple different manufacturers to create these Apple watch bands is amazing because it's just, it just spawns a whole other industry similar to what we were just talking about, like with the app store, for example, and, you know, in, in cases for your iPhone. I mean, there's just so many people that rely on the Apple ecosystem in a way, but, but I, I love the fact that you can switch out those, those watch bands. And I used to not, I used to just think, well, I'm going to leave it on, but but you've inspired me and my my son just got one too and he loves switching them out like he'll he'll switch it out for whatever he's wearing so that it matches what he's what he's wearing which is a little i guess uh fashion conscious forward but i just love the fact that apple allowed it to do that and it's and it's great stuff yeah i remember back in the 1980s people used to get the relatively inexpensive swatch watches in different oh, colors my and you goodness. Would wear yes, different colors on different days and and it was sort of you know, not monumental to have a fashion statement of it. And again, for the third party ones, it's nice that, you know, you don't, although I've always purchased the Apple bands because I trust the quality of them and I know yes, that they're not going to yes. break or fall off or something. I agree. You can get everything from, you know, the highest end made of premium leather by, you know, Hermes and, and companies yes. that work with Apple and some that don't all the yeah, way down to are. the least yeah. expensive um, watch um, or, or just a style that Apple maybe doesn't make or a color that you want to get that somebody else does. So it, it, it really makes the, and you know, Tim Cook, um, Apple CEO, often talks about how the Apple Watch is the most personal device that Apple makes because it's yeah, attached to your body. And so you really want to make it your own. Oh, I love the, in fact, I was watching uh, Stephen Colbert last night and he was wearing the one that you're showing right now, the uh, the Brave yeah. Solo Loop with the, with the rainbow colors for Pride, beautiful. Uh, Pride Month. It's beautiful. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it, there's, you can make it whoever you are. If, if you want something, you know, state and professional, if you want something loud and colorful, if you want something to match the sport team that you're cheering for, it's, uh, it's, it's fun. I loved how you mentioned on here in your in your piece because uh, I didn't even think about it because after after reading it, first of all, if you want any of these watch faces, even without the bands, you did a great job, Jeff, of of pointing people. You just go to the watch page, and in fact, I did mine. So, oh, I got stereo <laughs> there now, but. I got, I got my you got, USA. You're ready for the July the 4th. Excellent. <laughs> but I loved how you even put on here, like during Mardi Gras, you put on the colors. And it's great how you broke this down. Like this this isn't anything new with, with what you can do with Apple. In fact, it already the, the capability is already built into the watch faces. It's the stripes faces, I think, uh, yeah. which is just absolutely fantastic.
Yeah, it's nice that, you know, there's so many different built-in watch faces and some people wish that Apple would have an, uh, a watch face store so that people could buy them for third yeah. parties and maybe they will one day. But there is, a lot, there is a lot that you can do with just the styles that Apple has because you have, for example, one that allows you to put a photograph and you can put whatever photograph you want. Yeah. And then this Stripes one is a lot more versatile than I think many people realize because you can have, you know, for anywhere from one stripe, so it's just a solid color all the way up to right. many, many, many stripes. Right. And by changing the colors of them and by changing the angles, you can really, I mean, there is an infinite number of different uh, styles that you can have. And so that's, you know, for, for me living in New Orleans, purple, green, and gold are the, the colors for Mardi Gras. So yeah. I've got one that there during a uh, football season, I will change it to black. Like a, I have one that's got like a, <laughs> a gold, black, gold stripe to correspond to the black and gold for the New Orleans Saints football team. Right. And so you can make all of these yourself. You can download the ones that Apple has for the countries, but you can customize them and change them. And um, one of the things that's coming when uh, Apple updates all the software later on this year, Watch OS 8 has a new watch face called Portraits, which yeah, is nice because, go. oh, you have it there, great. Because you take you can take a, a, a portrait picture <laughs> of somebody, but it, it's smart enough to know where the person's head is. And so it puts the clock sort of behind them. So it, it makes it, gives it sort of a 3D look. Um, it looks pretty sharp. And so um, I wish that Apple came out with new watch yeah. faces more often than they do. But fortunately, when they Me do too. come out with them, they come out with some pretty good ones. So, well, and and you have the ability to customize these a lot, right? And now, th the best way to do this is to use the watch app on your iPhone, right? So you can go in there and you can customize the way you use. I most of the time I have, and I see this on a lot of people. I have the Infograph Modular, which I know is that first one there, right? Mm -hmm. It has a lot of information. One of the things you say about having a watch face that just has the colors on there is that you don't have a lot of information. It just has the the, the hour hand and the minute hand on there, which is could be fine. And like you said, it looks very elegant sometimes, but I usually have one that shows like the weather and I've got a calculator on there and my rings and even a decibel a meter level. Uh, you can get crazy on there and have all kinds of information or you can have it just as plain as you want. And I just, I love the fact that Apple, you, you have to do this on your phone with the app that is a, that the phone that's connected to your Apple watch, right? In order to use the Apple watch, you gotta have an iPhone that's connected to it, but you can do a lot of stuff in there into the, in that app, which is great. Yeah, two of them that I that I wear a lot. I like the Infograph one, modular, like you said. That's a good one. Right. I often use the one called Activity Digital because I often yeah. try to close my rings every day and you know work out to do that. And so yes. that one just sort of gives you your progress on your three rings every day. And then when I want to be a little more fancy, so for example, yesterday I went to court to, it was the first time I've been in court in person in over a year with the pandemic wow. to argue and appeal. And I switched over to the California watch face because it has Ooh, a nice a sort nice of traditional one, one yeah. with the uh, analog hands. And if somebody, um, especially because I have the the type of Apple Watch that display always displays the watch face, even though it yes. dims it, you know, if somebody yes. just sort of glanced at my hand, you know, they don't need to see how many circles I've closed for the day, you know, walking right. over to court. Right. I want something that looks a little bit more professional. And this sort of looks like a, you know, traditional fancy watch. So, you know, with that, with the California face and with uh, my Milanese loop, it looks like I'm wearing a, a nice professional watch that you would wear Absolutely. at court. And then, um, and then at night I could switch over to something that's a little bit more fun and switch out my watch band and you know the the exact same device has a totally different feel to it well so you mentioned a lot of uh, apple will sell their own watch bands and like you said i typically do like to trust apple's own devices just simply because it comes from apple and you get the warrant you know you can make sure you get a replacement of whatever you need to if you need to um but i will put a couple of links i mean even if you just go to amazon and look this is one of the ones that i just recently got you can see it's it's um a, a mere pittance of the price at usually ten dollars or eight dollars um and in fact I think so many on, different on, colors goodness gracious absolutely and i think wh what did i see here now here's where you need to just be a little careful this one's working for me i like it it was it was very inexpensive they talk about the apple watch but if you look here in the um in the explanation down here, they say compatible with the iWatch. <laughs> so, so, you know, uh, caveat mTOR, right? Just just make sure that you uh, you, you look at the the ratings on all of this kind of stuff, and, and uh, just make sure you're you're uh, uh, not getting something you're going to regret. But yeah, the yeah, least just, expensive ones that Apple sells are fifty dollars. So if you want to go below fifty dollars, right. you have to get a third party one. Right, right, right. You know, I, I like the fact that we just talked about the iPhone. 
and how it has evolved and how incredible it has, you know, based on what we used to have before the iPhone. And it, it continues to make me think about the Apple Watch as well, Jeff. I know you and I talk about this quite a bit, but, you know, the fact that we've literally got pretty much a personal computer on our wrist. I mean, we are in the days of Dick Tracy, you know, right. way, way back in, in, in the day. And it's just, it, to me, it's just fascinating to see where the Apple Watch specifically is going to go. It's got to get thinner. It's got to get more powerful. You know, maybe have an M1 chip or who knows where Apple is going to be taking this. But it's just like you said, Tim Cook, they know how personal that this device is going to be. They know how important it is. And they know how intimate, I would even use that word, how intimate that device, the Apple Watch is. People aren't going to give it up. Once you start using an Apple Watch, especially if you're an Apple kind of a, a, a fan and have that, uh, it, you're not going anywhere and you just wanted to get better that's just exciting stuff i think all right so from the apple watch so we talked about the iphone already <laughs> the apple watch another device that you talked about uh earlier this week is the new apple tv 4k now you had an older apple tv apparently uh but you really like this newer one you did a great write-up in this uh this past week yeah, and you know, before we started recording, you pointed out to me that the Apple TV has been around just about as long as the iPhone. I mean, it, it came out in Incredible. 2007. In fact, it's funny that you just showed somebody on Amazon selling an Apple Watch band called, that they refer to as the iWatch. <laughs> the iWatch. When, the, when the Apple TV was first introduced, <laughs> Apple was going to call it the iTV. That's what they said they were calling it. Yeah, But then that's there right. was actually a, a British uh, telecommunications company that owned the patent, the, the, the copyright or whatever the appropriate uh, intellectual property word is for that. Right. So they had to change the name. They couldn't buy the right to it and they had to change it to the apple tv nowadays i don't think that apple likes using i to brand its products anymore it likes to have the word right. apple and its product names so um right. so the apple tv has been around for a while and it has it's it's one of these products that apple does not improve it very often and that often frustrates people because if you're looking to get one you know there have been times where it's been four years since apple updated it's like yeah. wow I, and they never drop the price out. throughout the entire time that it's being sold so if you're going to get an apple tv the time to get it is when a new model comes out because then you get the latest and greatest features right. and it's got right. the staying power i previously had been using one that i purchased back in 2015 so i've had it for six years wow. and it's worked really Goodness. well and one of the reasons that the big reasons i changed is just that with the newest newest technology we have of um, HDR videos recorded using right. Adobe Vision and stuff like that. I was having some difficulties playing them with that older unit on my TV. Um, oh, and I don't okay. even have a 4K TV. My TV doesn't <laughs> even support that. HDR. You wrote about that. But I just wanted to have <laughs> a device that would at least understand those videos and display them on my TV, even right. if they're not going to look quite as good as they do on my on my new iPhone and my new um uh, iPad. So, um, but so this new device is great. I mean, it's, it is a streaming device, just like all the Apple TVs. It does all the other great things that Apple TVs do. Like it can be a whole, uh, a home, um, a home kit hub. So it, right. it makes it so that when you're out of your house, you can call back into your home and you can not call back and just literally just use the home app on your, right. on your watch to, or your, um, iPhone, either one to control the lights in your house and anything else. It's, uh, um, it's a speaker, so we can it, it can it's an AirPlay speaker, so you can play music on that and your home pods at the same time have different music in different rooms. But I mean the core feature is definitely to watch videos on it. And it's I mean there's nothing easier than having an Apple TV connected to a television so that yeah. anyone that walks in the room can share what's on their uh, iPad, uh, computer, iPhone. And yeah. I know that a lot of uh, conference rooms at companies will have a television with an Apple TV connected. Absolutely. Just so that anybody could walk in there and display things wirelessly on the television. People use it in court for the same thing. But, but for a home device, I mean, it's just so nice that if someone comes over to my house and they want to share some fun photos, we can just sit around the big TV and they can just, you know, show them off on the TV, which is, which is great. So I love having an Apple TV. It's, it's a great device to have. And this, this new one's got some nice new features. When I was doing a lot of travel and doing presentations, CLE and other presentations around, I literally had an Apple TV that I traveled with. Jeff, it was just so great because I knew that almost any place that I went to, if they had a TV, you know, for me to present to or a screen with a projector, I could plug in the Apple TV and I could present. Usually I was presenting from my iPad. I could just present right through that. And just the versatility, I would really never use it for watching movies or anything. But you said this. And I'm going to go back quickly. I go to many, many law firms. Uh, well, I used to, but I still know a lot of people that have uh, law firms and they have a conference room. And in that conference room, typically they have a widescreen TV, Jeff. And 
probably hidden behind that TV or, you know, under the console somewhere, they have an Apple TV. And, uh, you know, I still have to explain to some people an Apple TV is the little, you know, four inch by four inch, a little black box, right? It's not a, a beautiful widescreen uh, glass. I think most people understand that now, but they have an Apple TV connected to that widescreen. And so now when you have a meeting and, you know, you're, you're talking to your team instead of making 15 copies for everybody in the room, you could just bring the document up on the television screen and somebody else could share their iPad or their iPhone as well. And you could zoom in, you could annotate that. So everybody is looking at exactly the same uh, the same thing, the same document at the time. And to me, that's just powerful, even from a professional aspect. You know, it's not designed, it wasn't designed initially for that, right? It's meant to be a consumer entertainment device. <laughs> right. But the fact that you can use it in a lot of these aspects from a professional component is really just amazing that Apple, uh, uh, you know, uh, allows that and even still, I guess they encourage it in the fact that they're not taking it out of there, but they really, it's just so easy to be able to share some of that, you know, like you said, a screen from either an iPhone or an iPad. And that's, that's great as well. Yeah. And if we can pause where you're showing on the screen right now, I mean, you can't, yeah. uh, you know, we, we would be remiss if we did not mention that this new Apple TV I was comes with you. a brand new remote, which is yes. so, so much better. You know, the old remote had some nice parts of it, but it was so thin. Uh, you, the picture you're showing now shows the progression throughout that time. Old white one. Remember that old That's tiny crazy. little one? So, but the the, wow. the third gen, the third type of it, which was black and it was thin and it had yeah. a touchpad on the top. I liked the touchpad, but the I problem is, is that sometimes you would pick it up and touch the touchpad by accident. True, it was so true. thin that it fell between flu uh, couch cushions. Right. It, you know, it had as many downsides as it did upsides, even though it did have yeah. upsides. And That's so true. Apple has finally, thank goodness, it took them so long to do this. They have finally come out with a new remote that really <laughs> use it keeps every single one of the upsides and it takes away all the downsides because it's a little bit thicker. It holds in your hand. They've redesigned it with a D-pad, but it's still got a, a touchpad on it. Um, everything about this is better. The only slight difference that I've seen, and I didn't even mention this in my post, was I don't think that this version of the remote has the accelerometer in it. So the older remote, you can use it for a game on the Apple TV because you could actually oh, yeah. move your hand around for some of these yeah. like sporting games where you could pretend like it's a tennis racket, sort of right. like a Nintendo Wii. I don't think That's you can right. do that with this one. I have to tell you, I do that so infrequently i did it when my yeah. kids were a little bit younger that i don't miss it and so if you have an older apple tv um for most many many of the models any model that the old black one worked with you can now just buy just this remote so if you have the last generation oh, nice. of the apple tv 4k that came out i believe two years ago you know there's not enough difference between that model from two years ago and the one today unless you're really into hdr then you need the new model but otherwise there's right, not enough right. differences that you might just want to get the new remote for something like seventy dollars but um but if, if you have an older model like I do, I think this is a nice time to upgrade it. It's it's much faster, it's much zippier, it's it's an overall nicer unit, but the remote is by far the biggest upgrade in it. I know a lot of people were locking that remote. I didn't think about that for the game. I like you said, like kind of like you, I only used it for games to maybe a couple of times because I think now the Apple TV will connect even to like a, an actual game controller, right? Similar That's to like why an Xbox well, did this because you can yeah. now use an Xbox or a PlayStation controller, and those are so much that better for sense. games yeah. that why not let the game controller be the game controller and let this just be a good TV controller. And lastly, on this Apple TV, now let's go to content because you had one quick link here to Apple TV channels. I, I got to tell you, um, I know there's like the Google Cast, right? And there's the Roku that we used to use. I still have an old Roku, but uh, everybody in my family now, no matter what we want to watch, whether it's something from you know Apple TV channels or, or the Apple TV content or Netflix or Amazon Prime or YouTube, we're all going to the Apple TV. Like that's the one that we go to. But it, and it sounds like, again, Apple understands that. And so they're they're doubling down a little bit more and even offering some more content from the Apple TV channels here. Apple wants you to use the Apple TV Plus app um, and they even have a dedicated button on the remote that takes you directly to that app. And from oh, within that app, you can watch the Apple TV Plus streaming oh, service yeah. from within the app or you can subscribe to a number of third-party streaming services, not Netflix notably, but many of the other ones. I saw that. And so it's a way that, you know, it's the same thing that when you have a cable subscription, you know, you decide, am I going to pay extra for, I don't know, the Hallmark channel or the whatever channel, right. the golf channel. Right. And it's the same idea that if you just have an Apple TV, if you've cut the cord, if you don't have a cable subscription, you can still subscribe to those channels, stars, things like that from uh, from within the app. Um, it's a little confusing because it's TV Plus, 
Plus within TV Plus on the yeah. Apple TV on we your TV set. That. It's it's you know the the, the 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 nomenclature gets confusing, but um, but it's nice to have all the different <laughs> options. It is, and it, and again, it's just great that Apple. I mean, again. I, I, I'm with you, and I know we talked about this either last week or a couple of weeks ago. It's still a little confusing for me. Like, if I would just want to see something from Apple TV, like content, like a show that they made, like we've talked about before, uh, I don't want to see all the other. I, I want to keep things separate. Like, my Netflix is over here and Amazon Prime. I don't know exactly how all of that is kind of getting uh, overlapping and stuff. I, you know, but if anybody's going to be able to kind of bring all of that together, it's probably going to be Apple in some way, form, or fashion. But it's just it's it's interesting and neat that they are continuing to uh, to to get modified. Uh, on One that. tip I'll offer before we jump off of this is as confusing as it can sometimes be to find content within the different apps and the different subparts of the app. You know, remember that the Siri this is a Siri remote with the newest remote. The button is right. on the right side of it, and you can always pick up the remote and just say, "Hey, you know," or if you hold on the button, you, know, you have to use the "Hey" phrase. But you can say, <laughs> uh, "You know." Whatever the name of the show is, if, if you're looking to watch Friends, you can just say, you know, Friends TV show. If you're looking to watch a movie, you can just say the movie name followed by the word movie. And um, the it does a pretty good oh, job yeah. of searching yeah. throughout the different content. It, it's not perfect. I don't know that it interferes with Netflix, but for most of the other ones, it does. So sometimes I'll forget, you know, where, was I watching this on, on Amazon or was I watching it on, right. on Apple TV right. Plus or was I watching it on, uh, on HBO Max? I, and so I just say the name of the show and it just shows me right there and if it's not something that's available for for free i say free in quotes in other words part of a service i subscribe to if it is part right. of a service i subscribe to i can jump right there and if it's not apple will give me the option if i wanted to you know rent the movie or um or, or buy a copy of the movie or something like that but that's a good thing that you know just just talk to your remote as strange as those words sound <laughs> just talk to your remote tell it what you're looking for and it will find it for you and that's great well, we've already talked about the Jetsons. I mean, we've already talked about, you know, uh, Dick Tracy. To me, that's like the Jetsons world, right? We're just yep. going to be able to be able to say it. We're getting there. We're getting closer to that to that aspect. Hey, just a real quick bonus that I, I thought of in here. You mentioned it in here that uh, Apple has released iOS 15 and I, iPad OS 15 public beta now available. And you did a great job. It's not for everybody. I got to tell you, though, I installed it on my iPad. I didn't do it on my iPhone because I this is I trust my iPhone so much. Uh, so uh, you had a good warning in here. In you know, if it's some, if it's a device that you rely on, don't go to the public beta yet. It's no need for you to install it. You're probably going to be waiting until September, probably around is when we expect Apple to release the official uh, you know upgrade. But um, I'm just I'm thrilled that Apple did it. You and I have been talking about this, especially on my iPad. I spent yesterday at a coffee shop, <laughs> probably about an hour and a half more than I should have, Jeff, just playing with the new widgets and putting the widgets <laughs> on the iPad screen. And it was fantastic. I know you and I have talked about that before. I, so, I can't uh, wait to try it myself. I use my iPad for work too much that I can't. I know you can't. The, the, the right. crashes that come with beta software. But I am jealous that you get to play with all the new stuff a few months before I do. Well, and like you said, you, it is a good warning. And let me just let me emphasize it because you did a good job in, in, ta in pointing this out. Uh, there are crashes like I've already experienced a few. Right. So if it's something that you rely on exactly, Jeff, like what you're talking about, I'll, I'll be the guinea pig, at least on the iPad side. <laughs> but don't do this. Uh, just know people are going to be talking about it more over the next two or three months as people get ready for it to come out. Uh, you know, probably again, probably in September or so on. that. Probably so. All right, time for in the know uh, today. You know, this is the time to be doing some road trips, car trips, and I got to tell you, Jeff, I know you've seen this app because I've talked about it a couple of times when you and I have given presentations before. But for summer road trips, uh, in addition to, of course, having your Maps app, whether it's Apple Maps or Google Maps or whatever you use, to me, this is one of the best additional apps as a companion. It's called iExit. So they are still using the i. It's been around for a long time. Uh, it's available for both Android and for iPhone, by the way. I love this. What it, You have to be on an interstate, so it only works on interstates. But if you're on an U.S. interstate, it will uh, detect where you are, and it will tell you what the next upcoming exits are and will tell you what is available at those exits. I, I love this, right? This is great if you got small kids or so, 
Daddy, I, you know, I got to go. So you need to know, is there a McDonald's coming up? And of course, if you're going to stop, you want to make sure you get a cup of coffee. Is there a Starbucks at this next one? You know, is there a store? Is there a certain restaurant that you want to get? What kind of gas is available there? And in fact, they even had an ind integration in here now to where you can uh, see what the price of gas is at the exits before you even uh, get off of the exit. I've been using this app for a long, long time, and I still love it. I still use it all the time. It's completely free. They have some ads in there, so you just have to get around that. And I think some people pay you know, to, to sponsor some ads, that kind of a thing. But it's, it, it's not intrusive at all. And I use this constantly. Again, it only works on the interstate. It's completely free, but it's great. It's called iExit. It's, it solves the problem of, you know, you're getting hungry and you pull over and you get a burger at McDonald's and then, you'll, and then you get back on the road and you realize if I had just waited two more exits, I could have gone to five guys, which I exactly. like even better or something exactly. like that. It works great if you've got a co-pilot, like, you know, two parents in the front, the person that's not driving yes. can say, you know, yes. you know, I'm looking at the next four or five exits and, you know, we're going to want to stop on the third one up above and we're, we're this, exactly. you know, we're 20 minutes away from it. So it, it works exactly. well for that. I love it. Or in, in fact, I just quickly say, it'll even tell you like if a, if an actual uh, interstate rest stop is coming up right uh, which also is great useful. again i just i love it because it, it it helps you understand it before you get off the exit you know whether to turn right or left anyway anyway just a great thing i exit it's great to have if you're going on a car, uh, car trip so jeff what do you have for us today so the one i'm going to recommend is the google voice app and here's why <clears throat> many oh, times yeah. people will ask you for your phone number. And you know, some people don't even have a home phone number anymore because they've just <laughs> right. switched to their mobile number. But you don't necessarily want to give everybody your cell phone number because you don't want, you know, the pharmacy calling you while you're in the middle of a meeting just to let you know that your right. prescription is ready with one of those automated messages. And so what I've done is Google Voice is a free app. And when you first sign up for the app, the service, you can, they will assign you a phone number. You can often even get a phone number from within the same area code where you live. That's what I have. I'm yeah. in the 504 yeah. area code in New Orleans. And um, and then this is the phone number I give to people that, you know, I really don't want them to have my real number. And so right. they can call it. Um, I can have it turned on that my phone would ring if um, if my Google voice number is called, but I always keep that turned off, which means that they always go straight to a voicemail. They leave right. the voicemail and then I can just look at that voicemail whenever I get around to it. Likewise, if they want to send a text message to that number, they can do so. And again, I'm not bothered by it. And uh, I so right. I just have the app on my iPhone screen and I will, you know, I see it on my screen from time to time and I will notice, oh, well, there's a little um, badge on the app indicating that I have either a voicemail or a text. And I'll take a look at it. And like I say, it will often be like, a, you know, a third party, you know, provider or again, the pharmacy is a good example, you know, just giving me Excellent. a heads up with an automated message or a text that, that some prescriptions ready. I don't need that to be interrupting my meeting and certainly not when I'm in court. So it's so uh, I hate to say throwaway number because it is a number that I find useful, but right. it's just an alternative number. And it's great because it's free. So um, I recommend that you check it out. I think this is an amazing uh recommendation i i've actually used a google voice number for my business phone number i i don't know if i necessarily recommend that all the time jeff but you know for smaller companies or even some law firms you can use it you can sign up for a free number just like you talked about and this app by the way even though it's from google it works wonderfully on the iphone it'll give you notifications it'll ring to your iphone as if somebody was calling your iPhone, but they're actually calling that Google voice number. Now you have to set that up in the settings a little bit if you want it to, to do that. But I love your example, Jeff, as well, because you can just give it to other folks so that they don't have your actual cell phone number, but you can still call. In fact, you can even call from your Google voice number as if you're calling from that phone number. I mean, it's just really great that people do it and it's completely free. You do have to have a Google account, but you can have a free Google account. Any of them will work as, as well. Uh, but the app works great on an iPhone as well. Yeah, it used to have a feature, maybe it still has it. I just don't use it this way, where it would actually screen your calls and like ask the person's yeah. name. Um, do you it still will. have that? And so the idea is yeah. to sort of stop telemarketers. When somebody calls the number, the the app will uh, will ask the person, you know, what's your name? And they say their name, and then it will pass along to you so that when you get it on your phone, um, you know, first of all, a telemarketer will often be, be stopped by that process anyway. Certainly a robocall yeah. will be stopped right, by it. Right, right, and, right. Um, and so it's just sort of a way to screen calls a little bit. Again, since I, since I don't even have notifications turned on for it, I don't use that feature. But it's just another example of that's that's a very smart way to handle phone calls. So it's it's nice. That's great. So so we got iExit for trips and we got uh, Google Voice for robocalls. 
<laughs> there you go. Great telemarketers on that. Fantastic. Great stuff this week, Jeff. Thanks as always for your in the news post and for being here today. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. And if you're in the United States, have a great 4th of July.